So with the success of why you wouldn't survive the Left 4 Dead zombie apocalypse, I wanted to branch out and see what other universes that you and I would 99.9999999% not successfully live through. There are a lot of worst case scenario settings to skim through, but one that I thought is just absolutely insane and even puts our infected little friends in Left 4 Dead to shame was the Flood born from the Halo franchise. An ever-growing orgy of like-minded biomass boils and awfully gurgling and bone snapping noises, we look at an infection that breaks the notion of sky's the limit as it renders entire universes to bend to their knees. Any and all life is up for grabs as we increase today's forecast from a light rain to a flash flood. Oh shit, we're fucked. Today, we're not asking a question. Today, I'm telling you why you wouldn't survive the Halo Flood. Before getting into how fast you would become a walking abomination of various limbs, poppable pimples, and claws, we first need to dig up the ancient history of how the Flood came into existence. Billions of years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the highly advanced alien race known as the Precursors came to the Milky Way galaxy looking to expand life and their research based on their beliefs centered around the mantle of responsibility, a core ideology basically focused on preserving all life. In their pursuits, they created the Forerunners and a very early version of man. Mankind. The Forerunners saw themselves as superiors under the Mantle belief system and would go as far as to kill others who thought differently. The Precursors eventually deemed humans as the successor to the Mantle and this proclamation angered the arrogance of the Forerunners. The Forerunners brought their creators, the Precursors, to near extinction and forced all survivors to go into either stasis pods or to convert themselves into a sort of dust that would regenerate them into their former selves after a long period. But as time drew on, millions of years in fact, these dust piles were corrupted by sickness, madness, and of course with anything that says outbreak, mutations. Possibly caused by the sheer anger and anguish they faced by the betrayal of the race they created, the madness stirred up long enough inside the mutations to create the flood upon regeneration. But this regeneration wasn't just a dust becoming a full being instantly like some astronaut food mix. Humans stumbled upon vials of this dust and used it in general means for local wildlife until it unknowingly changed their genetics over centuries and spread like wildfire, causing humans to eat infected animals, boils, and eventually each other to grow. The Precursors were aware of their hostility and came to the conclusion that a unified hive mind hostile takeover was the only way to achieve peace and soon sought to consume all organic life. The Flood worked in a certain way, taking control of any organic life it can at an increasingly exponential rate and using these hosts and their mental capacities to various advantages. More on that later. But it was basically a virus slash parasite in human slash animal form, and with the more biomass and intellect it gathered, the more intelligent and gigantic it became. Notice how I referred to the Flood as a single entity? Well that's because they are of one mind, a hive mind. However, when the Flood count is low, the infected around the area are more feral and more zombie-like than anything else. But as the numbers grow and more intelligence is accrued, nearby proto-grave mines and soon grave mines will start to form. Grave mines, as shown here, are leviathan-like beings who are able to strategize and direct all flood forms to strike effectively and overwhelm all available biomass in a given area to increase its reach and strength. With the availability of dozens of nearby human worlds, the very first flood outbreak had begun. They grew exponentially from system to system, consuming all human contact across the system. As humans fled from their homes, they went into the territory of the Forerunners. This was automatically deemed a proclamation of war, so the Forerunners attacked the humans while they were already weakened from flood forces. The Forerunners drove us back to our homeworld, de-evolving us to primal states, and erased all human achievements across the galaxy. During this war, the Flood entrenched themselves amongst the mostly unaware Forerunners until they were overwhelmed, causing the creation of the Halo Rings we know today as a worst-case scenario plan to wipe out all life and prevent the Flood from expanding. For as you see, the Flood could not be killed in any way they tried or knew how, so the best way they could prevent the rise of the Flood was to extinguish their food source. The most reliable way of combating them is by literally hitting the reset button on your universe and executing a unified suicide pact on all organic creatures. By wiping out all life, the Halo Rings will prevent them from growing in number and forcing them to die out over time, as well as ruining the most important pillar of the belief system of the mantle, preserving all life. Of course, that wasn't the end of the flood as we came to know playing Halo 1 through 3. The firing of the Halos millennia ago did not necessarily wipe out all life. As 
as forerunners evacuated many species outside of its range. They also made a horrible decision of preserving flood specimens in containment pods for studying within Installation 4, the forerunner name for the halo ring we get to explore and fight on in the first game. The Covenant became quickly aware of the flood's nature when they opened these pods, and a large portion of their forces were assimilated, prompting outside Covenant to lock the facility down. Of course, humans having to touch everything. Touch. Don't touch. Touch. Don't touch. And now it only hurts when you touch it. Absolutely unacceptable! Went inside to gain intel on the Covenant, led by Captain Keys, and went and opened a pod thinking it contained weapons they could utilize, but they unleashed the fury of the Flood once more. This is where I'll lead off on the proceedings of how the Flood came to be and go into how they would spread, what they do to you, and how to combat them, and most importantly, how you would not survive if they began to rise in number in your area, or basically your planet. The Flood are a parasitic species always looking to turn your body into into an even bigger bod by smushing it in with your family, your dog, your neighbors, your high school principal, anything that literally can breathe or is just alive. Most people compare the flood to a zombie apocalypse, but honestly, you would pray for a true zombie apocalypse if these things came into reality. Multiple factors can back this conclusion that we will now cover. As I said earlier, flood spores, the little popcorn things you shoot, will immediately attack living organisms without hesitation as a typical virus would to any available hosts. It only takes one delay onto you and use their tentacle-like appendages to burrow into your chest and penetrate your spine in order to immediately render you powerless and hijack your central nervous system, injecting its cells to alter your DNA instantaneously and taking complete control of your body at that point while you feel everything. The altered cells within your body will begin to transform parts of you to better suit the type of flood you will become. If you were to become a combat type, your bones would be snapped, your skin torn apart, and organs reassigned to becoming weapons and allow for more agile movement. But during this physical reassignment, you will still be alive and feeling everything. So it's not like when a zombie horde pins you down and tears you apart until your body fails. No, the flood will keep you alive until it decides to either kill you by snapping your neck or to shut down your brain activity. You can either become a combat form of flood that can tear open prey with its jagged claws, weapons you had at your disposal upon infection, or a carrier form that pretty much is the boomer from Left 4 Dead, where a majority of your body is hollowed out to facilitate a way of spreading the infection. During the first stage of the local outbreak, these wandering flood will be feral and relentlessly searching for victims without strategy or direction. This stage will pretty much be the easiest time you will have as you will be able to make it out alive, but probably only while someone else is being overrun. This stage is the closest you will get to a typical zombie apocalypse and probably would be the same level as a Left 4 Dead level threat, considering the most dangerous form of infected types they have in their regular numbers. But the flood is a collective consciousness that grows a greater connection with the more biomass and cerebral networks it integrates. Once enough people, animals, and even plants have been consumed, the Flood will begin critical thinking in their numbers and start more unified attacks. So the days of one-track-minded zombie-like creatures dies out pretty quick as you are now facing hordes of Flood that will think of ways to get around any defenses you may have established. But even to that point, they still will be restricted to certain areas that require skill sets to leave, trying to find more resources to integrate. That is when they will utilize whatever is inside the brain of a victim to their full advantage. This is probably the most terrifying aspect of the Flood. Instead of just killing some prey fully outright, they will instead keep a host alive if the Flood discovered within your synapses in your brain a shred of knowledge that would be beneficial to the Flood. Example being, infecting a pilot of a giant vehicle such as the Pelican would give the Flood the ability to use vehicles such as watercraft, aircraft, and spacecraft to expand their reach. While it prods your psyche for any valuable information, it will literally torture you by visually erasing your memory engaging mental pain on top of physical pain, and so much more until the required knowledge has been attained and the Flood decides to kill you off. As was the case for Captain Keys, who held information on the location of Earth, as well as expertise on manning Covenant technology. The Flood needed to fly the Covenant warship, the Truth and Reconciliation, which was now swarming with Flood to a highly populated area. Once hijacking Keys, they saw his potential and used him in a very different sort of manner. Instead of becoming a typical Flood attacker or carrier, he and his flesh 
Ashford grotesquely melded with what is known as the protograve mine, the first step in pretty much the central neural network of the flood. The protograve mine is the first step to creating the near final evolution of the flood, the grave mind, that I will get into as we slowly realize how much more effed we are anyways. But let's just say we begin to see the hive mind of the flood as more than just a horde of zombies, but the workings of an almost god-tier-like individual pulling the strings behind the masses, a being directly speaking with you, wishing for nothing more than to extinguish what makes you, you. I am a timeless chorus. Join your voice, sweet mine, and sing victory everlasting. The cultivating proto grave mind interrogated Captain Keys mentally as he battled to retain his sanity and memories of his loved ones. It takes a strong willed character to battle off a mentally powerful hive mind for so long. Do you feel yourself to have the mental capacity to endure torture of mental and physical extremes? Or would you surrender and wish for the embrace of death? Eventually, the Master Chief we know and love was able to mercy kill Keys before any vital information was taken, thus, killing this instance of the proto grave mind. But with the vast amount of the flood scattered, across the lands and even cosmos, some of these small cellular structures will have denigrated after have existing for millions of years. The infection of the flood is not always successful when it comes to your mind. Through the eyes of one soldier named Wallace Jenkins, we discovered that not all infections are successful. With the extremely lengthy age of the infection, some remnants of the original strand were pervasive in finding hosts. During the initial outbreak of the flood and what we would soon have as our first experience with the flood on Installation 4, everyone except our favorite cigar-smoking smack-talking sergeant fell prey to the Flood. Out of these soldiers that joined the ranks of the Flood, Jenkins was overtaken by a pretty much elderly Flood Spore. Thus, its capabilities were diminished. But it still did its typical routine of entering the spine and assuming complete control of Jenkins' body, but did not kill him in the process. So the poor kid was left to be a passenger in his own body while it painfully mutated and went to hunt for other victims. At times, he could regain control of his deformed body, but it was mainly to tried to commit suicide by running into friendly fire or jumping off high cliffs, but the flood portion of him would always reassume control and prevent this. His constant bouts of switching control was noticed by ODST troops and was soon captured and interrogated. During the interrogation, the flood portion of him went into full attack mode and began creating a blade-like arm out of Jenkins' body, ripping bone, tearing flesh, and popping blood vessels in which Jenkins could feel everything. The pain was so immense that Jenkins snapped back into control long enough to warn his allies that the ship they were about to return to Earth with, the Truth and Reconciliation, was infested with flood. So there is a small chance that even if you get infected, you may still remain alive, but with a fate worse than death, as you watch your mutated body kill your fellow man, forcing them to join your ranks, and feeling every ounce of pain from transforming, taking gunfire, and all other sources of attack. So we are through a decent portion of the beginning and middle stages of the outbreak, with flood being able to acquire the abilities to control any vehicles and technology by stealing the know-how from its victims, it could also steal the information of a location you may be hiding out in if a friend went out to forage for supplies or food. Unlike a zombie apocalypse where one person would just cease to live, you are now outed as to where you may find safe harborage, as well as any security access or secret entrances you may have established. Your friend is now working for the Flood. Outrunning the Flood is also out of the question due to their extremely dangerous means of attacking, jumping long distances, using big meaty claws to open you up, and using guns and even freaking rocket launchers to take you down from far away. Keep in mind, it doesn't need you to be alive to force you into its ranks. It just needs your body and brain, alive or dead. And don't forget, the Flood goes down to the molecular level, so if you do somehow get away but find yourself cut by them or spit on, you will eventually succumb to and become... <laughs> and the fact that the exploding ones, when popped, just release more. Your greatest defense would be creating as much fire as possible, as the feral versions of the Flood will be deterred by high heat rate, as much as a virus would since high levels of heat can kill off most forms of disease. I'm not taking into account the variants of Flood that occur when hijacking Covenant or Brutes, as we don't actually have them on Earth right now to account for a Flood 2018 apocalypse, now do we? Unless Bigfoot... Unless... Unless... Bigfoot is a brute!
If you still believe you could survive all of this, well, it doesn't stop there. You had been experiencing the beginning and end of the feral stage. The second stage, known as the coordinated stage, will have the flood eventually becoming so widespread and powerful that the flood supercell establishes a hive that releases spores into the air that will cause the infection to become airborne. The flood will have a more centralized neural network to coordinate their attacks, but now at this point with the amount of biomass they have accrued and used to construct hives, the protograve mind I spoke of earlier will now have transformed into the Leviathan known as the Grave Mind. The highest form of flood creation, standing 280 feet tall, this hentai bait of a beast thinks very critically, will strategize ways to move flood forces to conquer entire populaces effectively and to keep itself and all flood specimens preserved. It will reside in a layer of biomass, kind of like a hive of bees were to make a giant honeycomb, but instead of bringing pollen and honey and shit, it brings dead bodies. So if you're planning on killing the Grave Mind at its source, you'll find a hard outer shell of flesh to get through and a sizable army to fight. With this grave mind pulling the strings and orchestrating large-scale takeovers, the Flood can also now develop foot soldiers without the need of a host to corrupt, with specimens known as pure forms. With the amount of biomass around, the Flood could create foot soldiers of varying purposes just to carry out an even more deadly agenda. The pure forms do not need a host in order to be created. You can literally just pick up some of the biomass in these hives and make a new Flood member, creating forms like the Stalker that can clean to any surface and jump even further distances, ranged forms that can fire projectiles of sharp bone matter and keep their prey pinned down into one location until other forces overwhelm them, the tank form that can withstand large amounts, you know what, it's basically the tank from Left 4 Dead, just more floody looking, the infester form created to hijack armored vehicles and instantly converting its drivers to work for the flood, and the spawner form that continuously works to create ground troops to keep up flood numbers for an unending siege. So at this stage, entire nations will will be doing everything they can just to defend themselves. Rescue efforts would be minuscule as large-scale attacks on hive mind cities with napalm strikes, military power, and even more drastic measures like launching nuclear devices. The United Nations using their unified forces to fight a windless battle. Depending on where the flood originate on Earth will probably be the first emergence of the grave mind, and with that, the downfall of the country it inhabits. Intelligence agencies, if they are lucky, will discover the grave mind's importance to the coordination of the flood and will launch a skill attack against it. Elite units would deploy and fail to infiltrate the hive and destroying the grave mine from the inside, so coordinated efforts between countries like America, Russia, and China would see to launching nuclear warheads to destroy it. Ethical dilemmas would cause delays in these pursuits as innocents may still remain in the area. During this hesitation, the flood may have already integrated high-ranking officials, maybe one of the elite forces sent in, and discover the location of the warheads and how to use them. They would launch a full-scale assault on a nuclear holding facility and be able to possibly use these nukes to their own advantage by assimilating scientists and military men who have the codes and know-how to execute the protocols. Imagine the Flood being in possession of nukes. But let's just say the nukes were launched and successfully hit the Grave Mind. Upon death of the Grave Mind, any localized flood units in the area not eradicated by nuclear hellfire will revert to their feral stages and look to infect as much as possible without strategy all over again. The death of a Grave Mind in a global scale wouldn't mean the end of it as if it were Independence Day where the crazy nut job flies into a ship and blows it up, informing others of how to eradicate the flood. There can be multiple Grave Minds scattered across the world. The infection rate would still continue. The the relentlessness of the Flood is beyond anything we can handle. We could exhaust all of our most powerful weapons, but a large percentage of the human populace would either be dead from crossfire or by being Flood themselves. The very fact that any body assimilated can have their intellect used to further the growth of the Grave Mind is the scariest part of all. Their reach is not restricted to biological form though. It can also release a logic plague, corrupting all artificial intelligence and software, making our primary forms of communication and technologies in every Everyday lives wiped out within a short period. We will revert to a time period in world history where computers and technology were much more archaic, if none at all. However, the logic plague was for more advanced AI like Cortana, but with the kind of secret technologies the military and governments of the world probably have hidden away from the major populace, we may have advanced technologies that the Flood could hijack for their own devices. If all else fails and major governments and militaries exhaust all resources, humanity will fall and become part of the Flood. Survive 
surviving members will wait out their days hiding away until they either die out in isolation, become infected due to the air supply, or surrender themselves to the flood. The precursor's corruption to integrate all ungrateful life into one peaceful collective consciousness on our planet will complete. The grave minds of the world will ascend to their ultimate form, the key mind, where an entire planet will be conglomerated. The flood of Earth will reach their next stage, the interstellar stage, and make use of our space programs and brightest minds and proceed to reach for the stars as we have only done so few times before. The last remaining humans will peer from the ditches into the foggy brown skies and see the rockets we once constructed, what we saw as our greatest achievement, disappear into the clouds and witness the last giant leap of mankind disappear as the flood will have conquered us and moved on to find other hosts out there in the universe. Unlike typical zombies, and yes, some people probably would take offense to the Flood being grouped up together to dim-witted decaying rotting corpses, but hey, it's the general public's opinion on the Flood. The Flood do not have an expiration date. Zombies left unchecked could decay and disappear, and infected could starve out. The initial outbreak either would be noticed quickly, or much like the origin story, would have people using the dust-like form of the Flood in everyday uses unknowingly, until the Flood outbreak came from within us unknowingly, till it was too late. The flood will always consume biomass however it can, draining the planet of all of its life and resources. Humans, animals, plants, as long as it has the ability to live, it is fair game for the flood. The only real way to rid the planet or cosmos of them is to starve them out by ridding any source of biomass available, i.e. animals, plants, and humans of any kind. You may find yourself bunkered down in safety for a while, but you would need to venture out eventually, and when searching for food, you may find our once serene green and blue planet Earth turned into a festering hive where naturally growing food will be gone or inconsumable due to the flood's conversions. And if you're planning to raid a food store, you will have to sneak past thousands of flood troops from the smallest spore to the biggest tank. You will also risk breathing in the air tainted by the grave mines hive spores. With the interconnected mines they all share, even one flood noticing you will alert every flood troop in the, well, on the planet. No amount of resources you have at your disposal will stop them, and when you are finally captured, the process of conversion can either be quick and incredibly painful, or an elongated form of mental and physical torture until you finally surrender whatever information the grave mind wishes to acquire. With the amount of progress we have made in space exploration, we wouldn't be anywhere close to discovering a halo that originally depleted the food source of the flood, unless all countries agreed to eradicate themselves by nuclear hellfire and destroy all spacefaring technology to prohibit flood expansion. The human race and all the Earth's plant and wildlife will go extinct, leaving the planet a barren rock with dying floods scattered across it. But at least the flood will never plague the universe. Earth, at this point, will basically become Mars and everything will be gone. Conspiracy theory. Mars originally had flood and it was like an Earth society and that's what happened. Woo! Conspiracy theories! Yep, I got super, super bleak with that. To sum it all up, no, you will not survive. You do not want to suffer through this realm of existence. Don't even think you can. I don't care how many rounds of infection on Halo you have survived. It ain't happening. Now this has been a super long video that wasn't centered around Left 4 Dead, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. If I missed out on anything, I'm sorry. This is my first step into digging into the lore of the Halo universe. Feel free to leave a comment, and if you like the video, like and subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified of future bleak but realistic videos. Let me know what other apocalyptic settings just wouldn't be survivable and I'll see about covering it next. Donations on my Patreon are appreciated to motivate me and get you rewards like shirts, roles on my Discord server, which link in the description, and credits on future videos. On that note, thanks to my donators for motivating me to continue my pursuit into YouTube content creation. Until next time, I'm Zachass aka Wow Such Gaming. Stay wow!